Okay, so in this video, we're going to review, review applications of linear equations. So I'm actually just going to show you a few examples just to kind of remind you, like, how, how do you approach these? So linear equations, so that, you know, linear means line. So that's going to be the type of equation that we kind of end up setting, setting up. So let's just jump into it. I think that'll make the most sense. So two sides of a triangle have the same length, and the third side measures eight inches less than twice the common length, and the perimeter of the triangle is 20 inches. What are the lengths of the three sides? Okay, so if you're watching this for review, what I would recommend so that you get the most out of this video is for you to take a second to pause the video and to just draw what you think the setup of this situation is. If you just watch me do it, you're not gonna get as much out of the video. So I highly recommend that you pause and then hit play when you're ready. So, okay. I've got a triangle, doesn't really matter what the triangle looks like per se. I know that I have two sides that are the same length. I don't know what that length is, right? So I'm just gonna call that length X. And then this third side measures eight inches less than twice the common length. So this is the common length. So twice the common length would be two X and then I need to subtract eight inches from that. And now I'm being told that the perimeter of the triangle is 20 inches. So that means I need to add up the sides and set those equal to 20 inches. So I've got x plus x plus 2x minus 8 equals 20. And now we just do our thing. So I've got 4x minus 8 equals 20. And then I can add 8 to each side to get 4x equals 28. Divide both sides by 4 and I get x equals seven. So am I done? No, I'm not done, right? I need to know the lengths of the sides. So the sides are gonna be seven, seven, and then using this two x minus eight, so if I take two times seven minus eight, so that's 14 minus eight, so that equals six. So the last side is six. Okay, so moving on to another application. So a little different. So Dan ran the 100 meter dash with a time of 9.92 seconds. If the pace could be maintained for an entire 26 mile marathon, what would his time be? And so then we have this actually pretty important little note here about conversions. Okay, so this problem is, it, it seem, it's pretty straightforward in some ways, but the hard part about this is that we have to work with the conversions. So notice, I was given a time of his speed for an 100 meter dash, and then we're talking about a 26 mile marathon. So those are two totally different units. So the first question is, how many miles is 100 meters? So I need to convert 100 miles. So 100 meters to miles is the first thing. Now, to do that, you're going to use um, you're, you're going to use unit conversions or dimension analysis. So, I want to convert 100 meters to miles, and I'm going to give you a big hint because again, I'm, I'm assuming this is kind of review. So, to convert this, what I need to do is I need to actually use this little hint here. I know how to go from meters to feet and from feet to miles. So again, if you're watching this for review, I don't care whether you get it right or wrong, but I want you to take a moment to think about how would you set up this information to convert this 100 meters? You're gonna multiply something with this information together to convert meters to miles. I recommend you hit pause, try that, hit play when you're ready. All right, so first things first, I'm going to convert from meters to feet. So to do that, I wanna use this one meter equals 3.28 feet. So I wanna set this up so that the meters will cancel out. So if the meters is, so, so remember this 100 meters is like technically over a one, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna put one meter here and then 3.281 feet here, which will allow me to cancel out the meters like you see. And then I'm going to do this one more time. So remember I'm trying to go from meters to miles. So now I need to go from feet to miles. So when I set this up, this is gonna be 5,280 feet here and one mile. So then look what happens, the feet will cancel out. And then I am just left with miles. So the first, the first thing I have to do is I have to just, you know, I'm gonna have to bust out my calculator here and I can figure out how many miles is 100, oops, 100 meters. 
So this will give me miles. So this equals 0 0.06214 miles. Okay, so now I know how we, that, sorry. Okay, now I know the 100 meters is this 0 0.06214 miles. So he ran 0 0.06214 miles in 9.92 .9 seconds. So now I, he wants to maintain this pace over all 26 miles. So how would you finish this problem? You know that he's run this amount of distance in this amount of time. How can you extrapolate that into how long it would take to run a 26 mile marathon? Again, you know, the, the thing with application problems, if even if you feel like, you know, if you're watching this, and you're like, oh, I really suck at these. The way that you get better at them is you just try to make a, a guess. Like, so take all this information, take as much time as you need, pause, make the best guess that you can and even if you get it wrong, you're going to remember the why this works a lot better. You, you learn from mistakes. You don't learn from just watching somebody do things perfectly, okay? So I highly recommend you pause, write down how you think you should finish the problem, and then hit play. Okay, so I, I see a ratio. The ratio here is that he ran this 0 0.06214 miles in 9.92 seconds. And then I'm trying to figure out how do I relate that to this 26 mile marathon. And when I put the information down like that, I actually can see how to set this up with proportions, you see? And so how do you solve with proportions then? Well, then you can just cross multiply. So then, uh, let's see, so I get zero, 0 0.06214 x equals 26 times 9.92 and just because I'm running out of space here so I'll just tell you what that equals so that's two uh, 257.92 so then if I divide that by the 0 0.06214 I get that X equals 4150.63. Okay, what? <laughs> so, all right, so now you have to actually think about this for a moment, right? So what are the units on this? This is seconds. If I say, for, oh, he ran it in 4150.63 seconds, is that like, is that like even useful? It's like not useful, right? So we have to convert this now into something meaningful because if you just told somebody how many seconds it would take you, like somebody would just give you a blank it's expression right so um let me clear a little space and so now i want to convert this from well how many how many hours are in this how many minutes are in this whatever so again this would be a really good spot for you to like pause here and see if you can figure that out and and then hit play so once again i could go ahead and use and I, I like to use dimensional analysis. I like using dimensional analysis because I'm just a very visual person. So if I want to get this from just how many seconds to how many hours are we talking about? So I know that in one minute, there are 60 seconds. So do you see how I set up that dimensional analysis again so that my seconds drop out? And then I could also go a little bit farther and say in one minute there, or sorry, in 60 minutes, there is one hour. Now you might have just looked at this and thought, oh, I just divide by 60 twice, but like why? Like why do you divide by 60 twice? Well, with dimensional analysis, you can see why that is, right? Why do you divide by 60 twice? Like this gives you the answer, so, okay. So, all right, so anyways, so if I work through this, I get 1.1529 hours. So that's one hour. So again, that's like not helpful. Like if you said, oh, it'll take him 1.15295 hours. Again, like not, not helpful, right? So I know that it takes one hour. And now I need to figure out what is this in minutes. 
so this 0 0.15295. So I can do that, so if I take that 0 0.15295, um, so this is now in hours, and I just took the decimals, right, because I want to figure out what is that in minutes. So if I take that and I, I can go backwards, like there's a couple different ways you can do this. I just like doing the dimensional analysis just so you can see like why does this work? Because you might say, oh, I just multiply that by 60. But again, I could ask you, why do you multiply that by 60? You're right, you do. Um, so, right, so we multiply by 60. It works out with the dimensional analysis and gives me 9.177 minutes. And then I still want to know, so this 0.177, so what does that come out to in seconds? And uh, let's see, I'm running out of space here, but I'll take this 0.177 seconds and I'll just do the same thing. So again, you, you might be saying, oh, just multiply that by 60 again. Again, totally right. Um, oops, sorry, this should have been minutes. Minutes. But the dimensional analysis reveals why that works. And that comes out to about 10.62, which will round that up to 11 seconds. So, all right, um, kind of out of space here in some ways. I'll, I'll erase this part right here. So the amount of time it would take is one hour, um, nine minutes, and 11 seconds. And that actually is like a meaningful metric to someone, right? So this problem, like the actual solving for X wasn't hard, but there were a lot of kind of baked in things with conversions that we had to think about with this. And so that can happen. I mean, linear equations, even though the equation might be simple, some of the background info can be a little tricky. Okay, so just one more. Um, so I've got Sam earned $25,000 from royalties on his music, and he set aside 20% of this for a down payment on a new home, and the balance will be used for a new car eventually. So he invested a portion of the money in a CD account, so that's a bank certificate of deposit, that earns 2.25%, and the remainder in another CD account that earns 1.75%. If the total interest earned after one year is a is $405, how much money was invested in each account? Okay, so this, this has like a lot going on. So first things first, so he says that 20% so, so 20 of this money is being set aside for a down payment for a home. So how much is going for, maybe I'll just write it like this. So how much is going to the home? How would you figure that out? Well, you would take... 20% right of the 25,000 and if you calculate that that is $5,000 set aside for the down payment okay so that's how much goes to the home now the rest of that 20,000 so the rest of that 20,000 remember the first 5,000 went to the home so the rest of this now is going to go into these two CD accounts, where one own, uh, is 2.25% interest and the other one is 1.75% interest. And so what we wanna figure out then is, so after one year, the interest from these two accounts is $405. So we wanna figure out like how, how do we figure out how much money was put into each account initially. Okay, so again, I, I think this is a good one. This is a little tricky, I think, but I think it's a good one to try to figure out how can you split up the 20,000 between the two accounts? You're, you're gonna have to use an X somewhere in this, right? So I will give you a hint. Let's say that I throw X in one account. I don't know how much X is, but I know it's X. So I have to throw the remaining amount in the other account and when I combine the interest from those two things, I get $405. I think I've, I've kind of laid out actually for you how this is set up. So again, I would challenge you to try this on your own and then hit play for the solution. Okay, so I went ahead and I cleared a little bit of space. So I don't know how much is going to each account, but I know how to calculate interest. So 2.25%, that's 0 0.0225. I don't know how much it goes into the first account. 
So I'm just gonna call that amount X, that, like I said, right? So X goes into the first account. So of that, I have 0.0225 times X. There's the amount of interest off of the first account. Now, here's the maybe kind of tricky part for the other one. So I have this 0 0.0175, so that's the interest from the second account, right? And so ultimately, like the remaining amount of that $20,000 has to go into this account. So the way that you represent that, you take that 20,000 and you subtract off whatever the X was. I don't know how much X was, but whatever it is, this is how much went into the first account. This has to be the amount that goes into the second account, right? What's left of the $20,000. $20, and the combination of these two things is 405. Cool. So this is all we have to solve. Um, so, I mean, there's a little bit of work involved, sure. Um, but this, this is all that we've got to do. And I'm going to just like really quickly remind you of a little trick you can use. So, okay. So if I, first of all, if I, um, distribute here, um, oops. So 0 0.01, 0 0.0175 times 20,000 is 350 and then minus 0.0175x equals 405. So just a little trick, like you maybe you're using a calculator, so it doesn't matter, but I wanna just remind you of a little trick you can use. If you wanna clear the decimals, you can do that by moving the decimal over. So just notice for these two, so I move the decimal over. So this is one, two, three, one, two, three, four spots. So if I do it for these two decimals, you have to move the decimal the same amount. So I would also have to take the invisible decimal here at 350 and add four zeros behind it. Same goes for the 405. So I would take this invisible decimal and just add four zeros behind it. So just a reminder, that's how you can clear decimals in all equations. So I just thought it was a good opportunity. Um, I think in this case, I don't wanna make the problem longer, but I wanted to just mention that. Okay, so let me, let me keep going with this, simplifying everything. So what I get now is 0.005x plus 350 equals 405. And then if I subtract off the 350, I get 55. So then my x, when I divide that by 0 0.005, that comes out to $11,000. So it's going to be 11000 in the two 0.25% account. And then the remaining amounts, so that would be $9,000 in the 1.75% account. And so there you go. Um, okay, so three really different problems just to kind of remind you of different strategies to use um, for linear equations. So just a really quick crash course review. That ends it for this video. You guys have any questions, you can always direct them to me. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another video.